I worked hard as hell for Donald Trump not to be president. But today, unlike Donald Trump and his followers, I acknowledge that he won. Mm -hmm. I hope right. for the best for our country. I was going to say one of, but probably Anna Navarro was the most widely seen and most outspoken Republican that was anti-Trump during the U.S. presidential election race. I have no regrets. Yep. I worked hard as hell to elect the first black Asian woman president. Anna was ready to celebrate at Kamala Harris campaign headquarters on Tuesday night in D.C., but her story repeated itself. Cardi B didn't know what to do with herself as she watched the results roll in on Tuesday night. Pennsylvania has 19 electoral votes. Michigan has 15. Hey. Anna was conceding to take one on the chin on Wednesday. We can be sad today. Yeah. Today we can be sad. Ariana Grande wrote on her Instagram story, holding the hand of every person who's feeling the immeasurable heaviness of this outcome today and shared a meme that said Earth is in its flop era and added that Earth is continuing to be in its flop era. And another meme that said, me grieving, processing, and recalibrating so I can reemerge as a powerful force for love in the world. Stephen Colbert and Jimmy Kimmel, despite their best efforts... Those of you who are hate-watching this show right now, uh, wanting to watch me suffer, you will be happy to know that there was no joy in Mudville last night. I was all over the place. People often say to me, come on, part of you has got to want Trump to win because he gives you so much material to work with. No. One minute, I'm watching these long lines in every city, and I think, oh, that's beautiful, democracy in action. Next minute, there's a reporter chatting with some bro at Arizona State who said he voted for Trump because Kamala didn't go on Joe Rogan's podcast. And I'm like, where did I leave my passport? Is this... No one tells the guy who cleans the bathroom, wow, you must love it when someone has explosive <laughs> diarrhea. There's so much material for you to work with. I did struggle to find the comedy. It was a terrible night last night. It was a terrible night for women, for children, for the hundreds of thousands of, of hardworking immigrants who make this country go, um, <laughs> for healthcare, for our climate, for science, for journalism. Uh, we're gonna do a comedy show. It's a comedy show. We're gonna do some jokes in just a minute. Uh, Cause that's what we do. And I'll let you in on a little secret. No one gets into this business because everything in their life worked out great. So we're built for rough roads. I promise you, this is not the end. We have to continue to work to create the better society for our children, for this world, for this country uh, that we know is possible. Well, on The View, Anna was advising that by Thursday, the sense of loss or defeat needs to be out of your system. Tomorrow, we stand up. And we continue, we have every right as Americans because we love this country. And Cardi echoed that sentiment in a tweet on Wednesday afternoon which said, no need to be nasty, y'all picked your winner. All we can do is be hopeful and wish for the best. Jamie Lee Curtis wrote in part on Instagram, what it really means is that we wake up and we fight. Fight for women and our children and their futures. And fight against tyranny one day at a time, one fight at a time, one protest at a time. That's what it means to be American. That's what it has always meant. It will always mean regardless of the outcome. Now, Wednesday's The View, I was surprised at how calm Drew Behar was. My takeaway is that the system works. We live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. People spoke. This is what people wanted. I vehemently disagree with the decision mm -hmm. that Americans made. But yeah, then on Thursday, it was a different story for Joy. Today, I don't feel... Uh, yesterday, I felt better. Maybe it was the Valium. <laughs> 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 but today, I feel like we lost the Senate, the Supreme Court, the executive branch, the House is on the verge of going to him. It's pathetic. There are no checks and balances. A completely uh, intelligent, qualified woman lost to a guy who, who's simulating sex with a microphone. I mean, come on, America. Yeah. The comedy that the late night guys did find was remarkably the same comedy. According to Google Trends, search interest for did Joe Biden drop out spiked on election day. What the hell? Over the past two days, there was a spike in Google searches for the phrase, did Joe Biden drop out? Google searches spiked for the question, did Joe Biden drop out? Leading to the logical and troubling conclusion, the person Googling it was Joe Biden. <laughs> most of them coming from this IP address. <laughs> Although most of those searches were from Joe Biden, which is... Uh... <laughs> Jeffrey Wright might not be giving up the fight, but he's not going to continue the fight on Twitter. He wrote on the platform, was thinking the day before the election about doing this, 
There's nothing to be gained on this site anymore. Maybe there never was. Only things to be lost, as we just witnessed. What's funny, at times at least, or an information portal, now embittered, divisive, childish, chaotic, and intentionally so. And intentionally so. It's addictive and ultimately stupefying by design. This disinformation here is a weapon used on the vulnerable to distill power down to the disingenuous worst of us. It's working. This is a dead end. There are other means. I'm out. I'm profoundly <coughs> disturbed. I'm surprised at the result, but I'm not surprised. As a woman of color, I was so hopeful that a mixed race woman married to a Jewish guy could be elected president of this country. Yvette Nicole Brown tweeted, for us, this is an everyday Wednesday. Black folks are used to this. The rest of you are about to be shocked by how America treats you when it doesn't care about you. And your new dear leader doesn't care about any of you. The find out phase has begun. Kevin McHale tweeted, Supreme Court gone for the rest of my lifetime. Ultra conservative, evangelical bigotry, xenophobia, racism is the mandate. In 2016, we didn't know what we would get from um, a Trump administration, but we know now. And um, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. Christina Applegate wrote, why? Give me your reasons why. My child is sobbing because her rights as a woman may be taken away. Why? And if you disagree, please don't follow me. John Cusack tweeted, horror is coming. If there's any chance, take the house. Some of it can be stopped. He's now the president. I'm still not gonna say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi will still refer to Trump as you know who. We're still here. People, I, I, when I got out of the car today, I saw people living their lives, and yeah. that's what we have to do. And when things get to be so bright that we see them, we got to call them out. Yes. Viola Davis, who narrated a Kamala campaign video the day before the election. This daughter of Shamala, this daughter of the American story, is ready to lead us forward. Posted a photo of Kamala the day after the election and wrote, Thank you for your bravery, Kamala Harris. Thank you for loving America's promise. I am and will forever be proud. I think that it had nothing to do with policy. I think this was a referendum of um, cultural resentment in this country. Yeah, and I think that's dead on. I mean, I think it's reality that people didn't vote for policy. Trump didn't have any policy. He didn't do a great job the first time around. So there's nothing that people could point to to say, oh, I'm voting for him again because of that. He did a great job in that. No, he didn't. Yeah, the reality is that Kamala won in every race or minority, except for white voters. The majority of them went for Donald Trump. And then beyond that, it's no surprise to me that the majority of people living in urban areas voted for Kamala, because in urban areas, in general, you are living amongst every walk of life. Those in suburban areas were pretty even split. You're exposed to other races and creeds and sexualities, but you still are able to isolate yourself somewhat. And only 36% of rural voters went for Kamala. And rural voters are basically white. Like, it shows four states that are more rural and just decided to look up their population in terms of the ethnicity. West Virginia is 91% white. Mississippi is 56% white. Wyoming is 87% white. And South Carolina is 63% white. And also, it's not surprising to me that all the West Coast and East Coast states went blue. Even the states that border Mexico are blue or purple now. And it's not just because non-white people are voting more in those states. It's because that white people in those states are living amongst people that aren't straight white people. <laughs> so yeah, they know that Mexicans aren't rapists. You know, they're their neighbors. But for those people in the inner states, it's all this idea of the unknown, the fear of the unknown. It goes back to a very basic concept of, yeah, it's immigrants, it's transgender people, it's drag queens, it's, um, yeah, it's everything that, that they don't know. And that includes a female as president, and on top of that, a non-white female. And yeah, in the secrecy of that voting booth, you know, when no one else is going to know, White people mark the ballot for Trump. They don't relate to Trump. The guy lives in the gold tower. But they know him because he's a white guy. Sad. We do think too highly of America sometimes. Morgan Wallen says the N-word and his music shoots up the charts. I learned this years ago. But I talk about the fact that country radio music stations, they don't play females on the radio. Like, I mean, they'll play a Carrie Underwood or a Miranda Lambert song every once in a while. But it's mostly they play straight white guys singing about uh, their jeans, their trucks, beer, um, their dog, and girls. They don't even play females on the radio. They're not going to vote for a female to run the country. But yeah, what are your thoughts on the U.S. election and some of the response to it? My point is this. 